<laughs> Good. Well, we really hope you enjoy your day today. See familiar faces and some unfamiliar ones. My name's Carissa. I'm the director of the Solid Rock Youth Center, um, which is upstairs. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. Um, so, well, today is a really special day for some very special people, so we're all really happy that you guys can be here. Uh, we actually planned for 30, so make sure you invite your friends next year cause, so we can fill up, because um, we love to we love to do this. This is a very special day for me. I have two special needs siblings, and so this is like my favorite day of the year, um, as far as for the events we do. So I really hope you personally, you enjoy the day, that you're able to relax, that you're able to have a good time. Um, to have some fun and just to be encouraged by everything that goes on today. Um, just an introduction to the organizations that are here today that help put this together. The Solid Rock Youth Center is open every Friday and Saturday from 6 o'clock until 9 o'clock. Um, we have lots of different events every year, the Super Bowl party, anime, Comic-Con, Nerf fights, movies, um, just cool things for them to do upstairs. Um, if you go through the, the hallway here, um, up the steps, you're welcome to go up there and just kind of look around and check it out so you can see what's up there. Um, we're open throughout the whole school year, so we'll be closing this year in May. We'll reopen in September again. And if you want to know more, there's more information back there on the table in Fellowship Hall. If you like our Facebook page, that's the easiest way to figure out what all our events are um, for up there, um, including Da -da -da, our care to givers day for next year. I put it up there. So if you want to have a free thing, it's always, usually it's all the first, I try to make it the first um, Saturday of March. So if you keep that in mind that you want the first Saturday of March, just block it off now and you'll be able to come next year. Um, FBC is First Baptist Church in Morrisville. We have a lot of special needs families here. And so we have two services on a Sunday as well as a Sunday school, a children's church. We also have a one and youth group programs. And with the SYC, um, we've also started a special needs support family group, which is called Shining Lights. It's every third Thursday. Um, and the entire family is welcome to come to that. We have stuff for the kids to do while the parents talk. We have stuff for you guys to do together. So um, you're all welcome for that, to come to that. Um, because we have so many special needs families here, all, a lot of our people, our Sunday school workers, our youth workers, our wanna workers, are all used to dealing with special needs. So um, it can help you feel a little bit more comfortable to bring your special needs um, child here. Um, the other organization that um, originally started Caregivers Day, they do theirs in November, is called Johnny and Friends. And they're an amazing organization that um, was created pretty much to support you. Um, it's created by Johnny, who is um, a paralegic now. And they've started amazing programs that are for the whole family, including um, the ability to help you get a wheelchair, the ability to go to camp together as a family, um, different support groups all over the area, all things like that. And all information for all three of those groups is located um, in between the, on a table in between the food and the craft section out here. So if you want to pick up any of that information and find out more, you're welcome to do that um, over there. Um, so a little bit of housekeeping instructions for the day. You will have plenty of time to visit each station. Don't rush. You'll make it. <laughs> um, enjoy your time. If you know for sure there's one station you don't want to miss, you might want to go there first. But like I said, you'll have plenty of time today to get to all of them. Um, all the stations and where they are are listed in your program. I do want to highlight our craft area because that's one of my fun, the fun areas. Um, the, all the crafts are extremely simple this year. Um, you should even, most of them, be able to do with your special needs child depending on where they are. Um, and they're nice because they're all portable. So. You could take it all with you. Our goal is to take it all with you and like while you're sitting at their basketball game going nuts because you're so bored, you can pull out a craft and you and your kid, can, another kid can do a craft or whatever. So all the crafts are portable and real easy to do. Um, and you might want to do it with them. Um, lunch will be served from 12 to 1 or as soon as we get out of here until 1 o'clock. Um, so there are suggested times listed if so please, if you're the first time from 12, just go straight to lunch. If you're the second time and you're in the middle of the station and 12.30 hits, finish your station and then go to lunch. Okay, it's not like a set thing. So just, um, and there's a list out there if you don't remember when it is. Um, you can just check the list for your time. Um, as you leave at 4 o'clock today, please don't forget to take your gift bag. Um, they're located out there. The staff also um, will try and remember to make sure you, you get one. Um, there's two different bags, one for first-time visitors and one for second-time visitors. <coughs> so we have those for you as well. Also, let the staff know, um, Jamie and Eileen, who are the ones 
that met you when you came in. If you'd like to be informed about next year, I try at least to send at least one email out saying, hey, by the way, Caregiver's Day is coming up. If you want to um, just reply to the email, I can register you. Um, instructions for tonight. Um, if you have a younger child, I don't think anyone has signed up right now. Um, so if we don't have anyone signed up, we won't do it. But um, they're welcome to come back and watch a movie and have some popcorn and bubbles with us. Not eat the bubbles, just play with them. Um, if your older child is coming tonight, um, please walk them up to the youth center. The back door will be open. It says SRYC on a right, very large painted door. Just walk them upstairs and sign them in. Um, we'll be there from 6 o'clock until 9. You can drop them off and pick them up anytime within that time frame. It doesn't have to be perfect. We'll be playing games, listening to music, coloring, doing other activities like dancing. Um, if you see, again, if you like to see some of what they're doing, I'd encourage you to go up there. If you haven't signed up your child, but you want to, you can do that. Just see me. Go back to the registration table. They've got the list out there. Um, your child should be able to comfor comfortably hang out with so anyone who's in grades 6 through 12. So, for instance, my brother is 22, 23. No, he's not. He's not allowed to be 23. He's 22. <laughs> we'll call him 22. <laughs> and... <laughs> But comfortably, he socially, he can be with grades 6 through 12 and feel perfectly fine with them and accept it and, and do exactly what they do. So if he, they are in that age range, just socially, they want to be up there, they're welcome to come up um, and hang out up there with us tonight, like I said, from 6 to 9. Um, two of the workers here today um, will be up there. They're very familiar. They both have special needs kids. They'll be up there working with them. And we will have a youth, um, youth up there who are specifically up there to hang out with them and make sure that someone's with them and they're having a good time and stuff like that. So they'll be up there as well. Um, so make sure if um, you want your child to come back tonight that you sign up for that. Um, okay. So we're going to do a little bit of fun stuff. Because that's always fun. Um, so if you will notice um, on your, your seats, I'm sure you're all sitting down going, I think that's for the garden. What am I supposed to do with the rock? <laughs> all your rocks have um, sayings on them special sayings on them. So if you just pick up your rock, turn around and look at your saying. And what I want you to do is just take your saying, turn to the person in front of you, behind you, somewhere on the side of you, read your saying to them, and tell them, um, you know, what you think about that saying, what you like about that saying, what it would mean to you, and then have them do the same thing for you. And, um, and that'll be your, so you can talk a little bit. If you know the person sitting next to you, try someone that you don't know too, okay? All right, so I'm going to give you a second to go ahead and do that. Where should we start? Okay. Well, I hope you had a second to get to know each other a little bit more, kind of um, talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Um, we are going to do a, a little bit of music now. Pepe? Um, we're going to do some three songs with Pepe, so we invite you, if you know him, to go ahead and sing along. If not, just enjoy the music. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to turn it all over to them. Good morning, ladies. <laughs> and, uh, I'm not, uh, and gentlemen? No, no, no gentlemen. All ladies. <laughs> if you'd stand again, and gentle, and gentle man right there. If you would stand with us, we're going to sing a couple songs together. And I just want to say thank you to you ladies for allowing this church to have the opportunity to bless you today. 
because as you know better than probably anyone else, that to in blessing someone else, sometimes we discover the biggest blessings uh, ourselves in, in humbling ourselves to bless someone. And uh, I know you've been uh, tasked with the privilege of blessing every day and, and serving um, people that God's put into your life. And uh, it's just awesome that we can take a moment as a church to be able to bless you. And uh, so right now we're going to sing a song to bless God. Believe it or not, the Bible does say that we have the ability to bless God, to, to bring joy to Him. And this song is absolutely one of my favorite songs. If you attend the church, you know it, uh, that every time I make the girls sing it. <laughs> Blessed be your name. Does anyone know what the name Jesus means? Yeshua, or not, yeah, Yeshua, right? It means uh, God saves. So uh, we want to bless that name, that God saves us. Let's sing it together. Trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. 
and all will see how great such a comforting, comforting song uh, to know that we have a friend in Jesus. He's just not our Savior. He's not just our Lord and Commander, but He's also our closest friend. What a friend we have in Take it to the Lord in 
you so much that we can come alongside you. Lord God of the universe, creator of everything we see, our very being. And Lord, you've drawn close to us through Christ and through your word. Father, I thank you for that awesome privilege to come before you, to take this moment to worship you in song. And Lord, to just take a, a, a moment out of our week to acknowledge you. Be with us this day, Lord. Bless these beautiful women. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I'm, uh, I'm pregnant, and I blame everything on that right now, <laughs> including the fact that my memory just doesn't exist. So I have an icebreaker, and I did the wrong one, which is why you all have M&Ms that you didn't get to use. <laughs> um, so if you want to open your M&M packets, you can pull out just one M&M. Just one. You'll have to breathe. It's okay. You can eat the rest later. Promise, okay? Promise. You can eat the rest later. So you're going to pull out one M&M. When you have your M&M, um, look at the color and then listen closely just for your color, okay? If you pulled out a red one, you're going to give um, just one person your favorite memory of your special needs child or husband. If you pulled out a yellow one, you're going to tell a joke. Mom tells blonde ones all the time. It's okay. Tell, if you pulled out a green one, you're going to tell something that made you laugh recently. If you pulled out a blue one, you're going to tell a fun fact about you. If you pull out a brown one, you're going to tell your favorite TV show to watch as a family. And if you pulled out an orange one, you're going to tell your favorite encouraging song. Ready, set, go. <laughs> I love looking at their faces. It's so funny. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Hey. Coach Al is happy. Okay. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed that. No one hurt me because I made you tell a joke. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do now is our drawing. So you're going to look at your rocks again, which is what you were actually supposed to do with the rocks the first time. <laughs> and I'm going to pull out a saying. If the saying matches, you get a prize. <laughs> I know if, I almost see a whole bunch of you picking up the rock next to you going, I can use this one instead. Okay, be strong and courageous. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you. Does anyone have that one? No, Leslie's pointing to the one in front of her. Uh, you can relax. I will be handling today. Love God. That's that one. Yeah, well, there's 20 in here, and there's only like 10 of you, so. He who kneels before God can stand before anything. There's two of those, so it could be that someone else has one of those. I'm going to go through all of these. This is going to be fun. You are braver than you believe, smarter than you think, stronger than you seem. Yay, we have a winner. All right, you may pick out any of these as your prize. What would you like, madame? Come on down, come on down. Check it out. But while she does that, I'm going to keep going because you people are only on a, sitting on a certain number of rocks. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You're welcome. Someone's got that one? Yay! Come down and pick out a prize. Come to me, all who labor, and I will give you rest. Jesus. Okay, come on down. I'm sorry, I don't have chocolate for you this year. You can't know, you can only believe. C.S. Lewis. Don't lose hope. Yay, okay. okay. You can pick out one of the pretty little bottles. You're welcome. Okay, so our speaker today is Rachel Mack. She lives in Highland, PA with her husband Jim and her son Levi. And on April 13th, 2006, their lives changed forever. 
Jim had a massive stroke and was hospitalized for two months. Although still very much in the midst of this traumatic change, life changes, Rachel wants to share her family's story of God's love and faithfulness. So she's going to be coming and her son Levi as well to speak to us. a caregiver too so that's right <clears throat> okay Sean if you could put up the breathe one please thank you okay so a day in the life and I'm just gonna tell you Thursday because it was epic but normal you know what I mean you know what I mean so Thursday my so my husband has had had a stroke and it's been 10 years this year um, and unfortunately his health is deteriorating they don't know why um, you know we've been through all the tests all the doctors and they don't know why he's getting worse they don't know if it's MS they don't they, that came back negative anyway his, so his health is deteriorating so on a normal night so this is Thursday so Thursday morning at 3 o'clock in the morning I'm awoken by gasping for air next to me which is a normal thing. So I get him situated and breathing again. And meanwhile, my adrenaline is pumping. So I then sometimes can fall asleep and sometimes can't. Um, so then five o'clock, my son wakes up for school, get him out to the bus. Then Jim wakes up again at 10 and screaming in agony, his calf muscle is almost about to rupture. So. Then we start our day. Then we shower and bathe and dress, and then we get our taxes done. Yay. <laughs> it used to be yay when we got some back, right? Now I'm ha just happy if we break even. Um, so he, the hour, it lasts an hour, the appointment, but he only lasts 50, 45 minutes. So you know how that is, right? Yeah, so I'm like, the last 15 minutes of the appointment with my tax people, I'm like, please don't say anything. Please don't say anything that I'm going to like be embarrassed about or just please be okay. Get through that. We get to lunch. Then we have to go on errands, and I need to go to three stores to get what I need to get done. But he only lasts for two. So then I have to take him home. And so that is then... Let's see, then Levi comes home, and he has more homework than we thought he had, he was going to have. <laughs> and I have a tutoring session at 6.30, then, and we haven't even made dinner yet. And, but you guys know all that, right? So life with uh, special needs people is definitely stressful, especially when you are the one, the only caregiver, and two, the only person really in the house. But with my husband, at least sometimes when you have kids, you have a husband to lean on and just sort of tag team. Um, this time, I don't have a tag team. Levi is my tag team. So we're going to talk a little bit about that later. So a day. So after all my stress and your stress, the Lord kept telling me, breathe. Just breathe. Did you hear about in the news just recently there was an article, and it was hysterical because my grandmother does this all the time. She'll be sitting, and all of a sudden, she'll be like, <sighs> all the time. And my mom's like, why are you doing that? And she goes, oh, no, it feels good. It, it feels good. Well, in the news the other day, recently, I think it was two weeks ago, there was a study that people who take deep sighs live longer. Can you believe it? So I called up my grandmother, and I'm like, you're going to live a long time. <laughs> uh -huh. So again, it goes with the breathe. So um, God gave me this acronym of breathe, and we're going to go through it real quick just to help relieve some stress in our lives. So B, go ahead and go to the next one, is be ready and be still. Okay, so be ready is like the girls, the Boy Scouts, you know, try and have things I try to like think ahead and make sure I have a Band-Aid in case, you know, something happens, uh, Tylenol in case it gets a headache, you know, antacids, Tums, Imodium, all of that, you know, so that's all in my thing so that when we get there, there's no stress. 
being proactive, exactly. Three steps ahead, usually. Now, um, you know, I make sure that I have um, extra pair of clothes and underwear in the, in the car, no matter where we go to. You don't know what you're, gonna, what you're gonna come up with. So be ready, take some of the stress out uh, if you plan a little bit ahead of time. Now, the be still is from Psalm 46.10, where it says, be still and know that I am God. So once you're ready, now you're ready to be still and let God plan out your day for you. The next one is to relax. Relax for you, for you. So while he's taking a nap, I've learned to relax and do something for me. Not to do maybe laundry, do, throw a little laundry in, but then while it's in there, relax and do something that I want to do. Because when he wakes up and when Levi comes home from school, it's not going to be about me anymore. And I need to fill my cup. And how you can relax is you can read, you can crochet, you can craft, you can write, you can take a bath. Um, all of those things. So creative writing was something that I really liked early on um, in the 10 years. And, that, and actually, I wrote a book and for children. And um, it was published. So Levi is going to end our time because it's written in his voice. I wrote it when he was three. So it's written from a first-person perspective from Levi. So he's actually going to read this to you to, um, to end our, our session. So that was something that really helped me relax because I could put it go in my head and just go somewhere else. The other thing that I learned recently is to crochet. And I have found a study, I don't, scientifically proven, that crocheting and crafting helps with anxiety and stress. You guys knew that, right? You knew that. You didn't, you didn't, they knew it. So, um, uh-huh, because you, uh, you have five blankets later, you know. I, right, exactly. Yeah, it's like the commercial where the dog has a sweater and the, 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 the tissue box has a sweater, but I'm feeling relaxed. Um, so if you, I do have the study here if you're interested. Um, and, of course, it was funded by Lion Brand, which is yarn, you know. But still, it's still scientific. Um, the next thing, the E, is eat healthy. Again, scientifically proven, but hard to do, but you know that you feel better when you eat healthy and not eat all the junk. One of the things that I have done to help with the stress level is I cook double batches. So every meal I make, I try to make two or three times as much and freeze the other two and three. So that way on the nights when I don't have time, I pull it out and heat it up. I buy the foils from the dollar store, it freezes really well, and I don't even have to wash dishes that day. So awesome. And then the other thing I do to, to eat healthy during for my lunches is I buy veg, fresh vegetables, I chop them, Levi's my time giver, sorry, and he just, he gave me the time that it was done, and then he's like, oh no. Um, <laughs> so I chop the veggies, and then they last all week, and that's my salad. So I already have them already chopped. It takes me, you know, just long enough to, to eat is really, I don't need to prep ma many meals. So that really has helped me. Um, and I have other things like that, if you're interested, but helps me he eat healthy fast. So just let you know. Not junk, right, right. I know. Um, I have a great recipe for oatmeal, too. An oatmeal with banana, and it, the water is the only liquid with the mushed up bananas, and that's my, I freeze, I make a nine by 13, cut it into my squares, and that's my breakfast. Really, really good, because I freeze them, and I just pull them out when I need them, and it's enough fiber and energy and everything to just get my day started. Um, yeah, so I love, I just figured tips. The A is ask for help. Know when you need help. And don't be afraid to ask. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes um, you either have a list of people that you can ask for help or also make a list of what you need help for so that when people ask you, you already have a list. You have a list of what needs to be done how many minutes approximately it's going to take you. And then when that person says, what can I do for to help you? You can say, 
how many minutes do you have? And then I'll tell you what you can do. So that way you have a list of things. Um, T, treat yourself. Small things. My biggest thing right now is, believe it or not, bath and body work soap. The soap. The smell soap. Oh, especially the aromatherapy. They have a, a mint and eucalyptus. And it's very relaxing. So every time I wash my hands, whether it's dealing with Jim or doing them in the kitchen, I'm like, oh, I take a deep breath, and I smell in this nice smell. And again, it just reminds me to relax. I see you, Levi. Um, not always food, though. Try not to treat yourself with always food, because remember, trying to eat healthy. But, like, Sunday night is the end of Downton Abbey. So I bought myself some chocolate with caramel, and I'm going to have one piece, and I'm going to make myself some popcorn, and I already have it planned out. That's going to be my treat this Sunday, watching Downton Abbey, the last one forever. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, the, the H is hear music. Music affects you, and it affects your soul, I believe. really does. So create two playlists if you have an iPod or iPad or whatever. One that's upbeat, that you're gonna need when you really just need some energy to do something that you don't wanna do. Cleaning, laundry, dusting, vacuuming. Side story. I bought a tiara, plastic tiara, and I can vacuum with tiara and this is the music and it just makes me feel special. Nobody sees me, nobody sees me. But that is, was a treat to myself. It was $4 in the, in like around Halloween or whatever. And I just, you know, if it makes me feel just a little special. And I put on my upbeat music. The other, the other one is a relaxing music. So at the end of the day, or waking you wake up, you can have some instrumental or something that just mellows you out. So those two things. E is exercise. Exercise with the serotonin levels, raising, it's going to help with your mood. Um, even if it's just walking around the block. Even if it's just walking on a treadmill. Even if it's playing Wii and doing the dance jam or whatever they have on the Wii. Or, what was the other thing I had? Richard Simmons. The, vid, the library has Richard Simmons DVDs. You put them in there, you have an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. And you get your exercising done, and you're listening and dancing to some good music. Exactly. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to end with, real quick, two things. Isaiah 43, 1 through 3, really spoke to me um, this last week. And it was um, Isaiah 43, 1 through 3. And I'm actually going to start at the end of one. It says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, and you are mine. And just having God know what I'm going through also eases some of the anxiety and stress. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned nor shall the flame scorch you. When you're going through this trial, know that the flood, they're not going to go over your head. They're going to go high, but they're not going to go over your head. The fires, you're going to be in fire, but it's not going to burn you. And the flame will not scorch you. And that, to me, was an encouraging word, that God knows what we're doing. He knows what we're going through. He knows each day, and he's not going to let you drown in that. Levi, you can get ready and come up. I'm going to end with lyrics from Breathe. It's on Caleb, if you listen to Caleb, and the chorus says, when the stress is on the rise in my heart, I feel you say, just breathe. Just breathe. Come and rest at my feet and be, just be. Chaos calls but you really need, all you really need is to just breathe. So remember to take a deep breath. And when you do, remember to be ready and relax.
and eat healthy and ask for help and to treat yourself and to hear music and to exercise. Thank you. I know I went over. You were very long. I know, I know. He was my timekeeper. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing? Real quick. Sorry. I want to, I want to introduce you. So um, if you have children that are special needs or adults that are special needs, remember that their siblings are kid caregivers as well. And they also need some time to relax and to breathe and to have some time, that's right, and to have, to have some time for them. And you also, also have some special time with you because a lot of your time is maybe spent with the special needs person and you don't realize it, correct. So a lot of times we, we have a monthly date that we go on so that he knows that I'm spending time, ju excuse me, just with him one-on-one -on -one, instead of having to split our time with everything. Plus, I know that if I need to run to the store for half an hour, that daddy's fine with him taking care of him because now that he's old enough, he knows what to do. So here he is. Back to the conversation. <laughs> I'm Levi, and uh, I'm going to be reading you guys a book, and uh, this book was written by my mom, and this book is called A Kiss Goodnight When My Daddy Had a Stroke. For as long as I can remember, Daddy put me to bed and kissed me goodnight. I love you, Levi. I loved playing with Daddy. We loved to wrestle on the floor. Daddy carried me on his, sh on his shoulders. I was so tall. He pushed my swing really high. It was so fun. Every night, Daddy would read me a Bible story, pray with me, and then kiss me goodnight. I love you, Levi. One morning, Daddy kept falling. Mommy was crying and asking God for help. Then she called 911. Am an ambulance took Daddy to the hospital. Mommy and I followed the ambulance in Daddy's truck. It was going so fast that we could not see it anymore. Daddy had, had his own room in the hospital. The nurses asked Mommy a lot of questions. They gave me some crayons and a picture to color. Daddy was really tired, so I tucked him in and kissed him goodnight. I love you, Daddy. I watched them roll Daddy and his whole bed onto a helicopter. They flew him to a different hospital. Mommy told me that Daddy had a stroke. She said that my brain tells my body to move, and my brain needs blood to work. Mommy told me about told me that daddy's blood did not go to his brain, so his brain got hurt. I didn't see daddy for a long time after that. Mommy cried a lot. We prayed that he would come back home soon. Daddy would call to pray, to pray with me at bedtime. I love you, Levi. That made me feel, sleep better, but I missed his goodnight kisses. We both missed him. The next time I saw daddy, he, was, he had his own wheelchair. I love to to push him down the hospital hallway. We ate dinner in the dining hall. I loved playing the drums and the xylophone for daddy, mommy, and the other patients. When it was time to go back home, I climbed up on his lap. Daddy hugged me with his arm that worked and kissed me goodbye. I love you, Levi. One day, and I went to get dad, mommy and I went to get daddy. He was coming home. We were so excited. When daddy came home, he needed a cane to help him walk. His arm and hand were not working, but he was home to pray with me. I prayed that God would make his leg, arm, and hand all better. Then he kissed me goodnight. I love you, Levi. Daddy can still push me really high in the swing. He can play hide and seek with me. He can play basketball with me. But my favorite part is that Daddy can pray with me and kiss me goodnight. I love you, Levi. Thank you. Great job, Levi. Are you guys having a good time so far? Great. <laughs> uh, one of the things was hear music. So I'm going to be singing, I don't know if the thing's coming up, but the song Overcomer by Mandiza, just to remind you that you guys are all overcomers.
to sing that song about seven months ago. <laughs> I was like, Emily, Emily, I heard of her coming. Please, you will be perfect for singing this. Please sing it for me. She did awesome, but now she's got to run to her play. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. All right, well, um, we hope you guys have enjoyed the program. Now it's time to head to lunch. Before you do, I want to um, give uh, Rachel this bottle. Last prize is for you. And Levi, I thought you deserved something too, so these up here are for you. You don't have to share if you don't want. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm just going to talk into what Rachel said. Crafts are good for you. Come to the craft section. And Joanie is specifically here to teach crocheting. So what do you know? Um, so if you're ready for lunch, um, there's plenty of tables. There's hostess at every table, so don't feel you have to fit four at a table. Two is fine. Three is fine. Um, but enjoy your lunch. They have beautiful tables set up for you. After that, you guys can start your stations, and you have until four, so enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye, everyone. You are, yes, please take the rocks with you. I don't want them back. We have plenty still. I'm about to give them away to staff. <laughs> yes, the rocks are yours to take home. They are also a gift. The M&Ms, too, but I'm guessing you already ate all those. <laughs>